This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight now, we bring you a discussion on India's push for a robust and resilient semiconductor industry. The participants are Pranay Kotasthane, semiconductor policy expert and Prasoon Srivastav, journalist. We begin our interaction and today we heard our Honorable Prime Minister inaugurating Semiconductor India Conference and this was the first time a Prime Minister spoke to semiconductor industry and with a bold message that India is ready for semiconductor, he asked companies to come and engage with India. India wants to be a major partner in the global semiconductor ecosystem. So, Mr. Prana, how do you see today's message from the Prime Minister to the industry and the world? Today's message was a very positive one. I would add that India is already a major player in the semiconductor ecosystem because uh, India is really a semiconductor design powerhouse. So most of the major world semiconductor companies do have their design centers in India. So a lot of development in semiconductors is done through Indian minds and Indian talent. So that's the starting point. What the message government is sending now is that we want not just the Indian talent to run this industry, but we also want to build some part of this ecosystem end-to-end, -end, right? So that is not just have presence of great talent, but we also want companies, semiconductor design companies, which are Indian. We also want semiconductor fabrication units, and that is manufacturing units based out of India. We also want assembly and packaging to happen out of India. So the government push is towards this vision that a lot of this entire value chain, currently we are just doing one part of the value chain, but the vision is that over time, become a player throughout this semiconductor value chain. So that's the message and the Prime Minister said so that all the government initiatives are focused towards covering this entire value chain and that's what is distinct from previous approaches where we were trying to be a player only in one segment. Mr. Pran, I would like to understand from you. Prime Minister said that it is very critical to have a semiconductor industry here in India. Can you elaborate on why semiconductor is required and why this much push is coming from the government? Semiconductors are really important for the current geopolitics, current technology and current geoeconomics. So I call semiconductors as being metacritical. And why are they critical? So let's think of it from a technological imperative, right? So whether you're talking about artificial intelligence, whether you're talking about 5G or 6G communication, or you're talking about autonomous vehicles, electric vehicles, all these are finally based on having advanced semiconductors, right? So because semiconductors are finally the brains of all the computers of anything which does computing, right? Whether it's your mobile phone, or whether it is your computer, or even whether it is your speaker, right? So all these things have semiconductors in them. So there is a technological imperative that if India wants to succeed in critical and emerging technologies going forward, one really critical component of that is to secure our access to semiconductors. Because if that is in jeopardy, then the entire critical and emerging supply chain becomes risky. So an example of that is just what U.S. did to China and Huawei in recent years. Because Huawei and because of the U.S.-China trade war, U.S. blocked Huawei access to semiconductors. And that has significantly slowed down its progress on a lot of fronts. So that is just an example to tell you why semiconductors are really important for development of other critical and emerging technologies. So this is the technological imperative. The second one is the geopolitical significance. The unique thing about the semiconductor industry is the peculiar supply chain. You know, because this is such a complex process, no one country can do the entire thing and be completely self-sufficient. So what has happened is certain countries have become very good in one part, one small part of the entire supply chain, while other countries have specialized in others, right? So what that has done is, on one hand, it has led to massive development and progress of the industry, but also on the other hand, it means that if one country decides to block access of a particular technology to a particular company, then the entire supply chain sort of unravels. That's why this peculiarity of supply chain means that all countries now want to at least have 
dominance over certain parts of the supply chain so that no other country can deny access to them. They will also have a bargaining chip in return. So that's why a lot of geopolitical element has come into semiconductors in recent years. The big driver of this is Taiwan. If you see, Taiwan is the place where almost all of world's leading edge ICs are made in that country. And China and Taiwan relations are worsening. So there's a great fear that what if China were to occupy Taiwan and Taiwan's semiconductor industry goes bust? If that happens, the repercussions will be felt for everyone, you know, whether you're buying an electric vehicle, whether you're buying your next computer, you will feel the shortage of that. Uh, we are already seeing some elements of it because of COVID-19 and related supply chain disruption. So that's why there's a geopolitical significance of semiconductors which has come to the fore. And finally, there is a geoeconomic imperative. Like I said, because the supply chain is complex with only one company or one country specializing in small bit of the entire supply chain, which is still very critical, and that's why there are business continuity risks. What happens if that company is delayed? What happens if that company goes down, right? So that's why the effort of a lot of countries is being to build a resilient supply chain. That is, find out alternatives to this very lean but very risky supply chain where there is just one supplier for a particular element. When you talk about dependency on other country or particular geography, if we see the ecosystem of electronics, we are dependent on several countries like for even the raw materials, for even the metals. Also, if you look at the Apple list of vendors, it is spread across the globe. So in case of semiconductor, how are India dependent on foreign countries? If you look at the entire supply chain, the first step is semiconductor design. So in design, we have a lot of trained engineers who are virtually the backbone of a lot of uh, top semiconductor companies. But as I said, the, a lot of the intellectual property of this these companies is not with Indian firms, right? So these are companies, American companies or Taiwanese companies who have set shop in India and they have access to Indian talent and Indian engineers design a lot of semiconductors. Now we are beginning to see a few companies which are emerging out of India and are Indian in terms of their intellectual property as well. So that's beginning to be seen, but it's still not a large section of the industry. So this one, we are on the next stage where we talk about semiconductor manufacturing. There we are completely dependent on other countries because we don't have any commercial semiconductor fab in the country. We do have one fab which does a limited amount of manufacturing for ISO and space related applications, but we have nothing which, for example, can manufacture a chip which goes into your mobile phone or into your TV. And we are dependent on, like a lot of other countries in the world, we are dependent either on Taiwan or companies, fabs in the US. Israel or Europe. This is the second stage. The third one is the assembly test marking and packaging segment. Now, this is a labor intensive segment where actually India can have a lot of uh, presence, but currently the cost is a prohibitive factor because generally these units are located close to the places where chips are made for cost reasons. So again, these are concentrated very heavily in Taiwan and East Asia. And that's why we don't do much of assembly testing and packaging as well. So this is how the throughout the supply chain, we have comparative advantage in design, but not so much in manufacturing or in assembly test and packaging. When we have so many engineers designing semiconductors in India, in India why not making it? Manufacturing is a totally different ballgame. It's not just that India is not doing it. In fact, many countries in the world are, have not been able to do it, right? Because it requires massive capital investment. It requires knowledge decades. So, for example, Taiwan does it, but Taiwan has been able to do it over 40 years, you know. So, there has been a lot of development which has gone behind it. So, I am sure India will also be able to do it. It's just a matter of time. But we have to also see that the hardware industry is different from the software industry in the sense that, you know, these manufacturing units, for example, the latest one that TSMC is establishing in the US costs around $12 billion of investment. 
and then the returns from them will the first it will be made only four or five years later you know so the companies have to have a faith in the business environment of a country they need to have faith in the tax environment of the country of the trade environment of the country and india until now has not been able to provide that confidence to the big players so they have stayed away from india and prefer to just do design here and not do manufacturing here we have talent pool here who are designing like mm. 2000 chips every year that is what the government share today it has learned from the industry 2000 chips are being designed in india to see the intel when they made the pentium processor it was mostly indian engineers who led the team mr vinod mm. tham was there even our minister of state for electronics nit was part of that team there were several engineers involved now government is also saying that they will provide all the incentives so which are the major hiccups or obstacle that you see are there which needs to be addressed by the government and the industry to start manufacturing it the important message that the government is sending is it's not just that we have to only do manufacturing but we need to be have presence throughout the supply chain in some measure all right so that's one thing in manufacturing the biggest hiccup until now was as i said there was lack of confidence in the industry on policy continuity there were a few years you know 12 billion dollars or 5 billion dollars and suddenly the policy might change doing business might become difficult tax laws might change so they for to stay out so right now the government message has been and that's what the pm said the government wants to become an and gate rather than a not gate in the past what he is trying to convey is that whatever policies government provide now there will be some policy continuity the government has made an upfront capital investment of a significant sum for manufacturing so what the government is saying that we won't reimburse you for your investment in fact we will co develop the manufacturing facility with you. so the government is ready to put uh, money on the capital expenditure right up front uh, which was conveyed to me as uh, by some as one big reason why they won't invest in india because there was no upfront capital commitment from the government so that has changed that was one major hiccup i think another major hiccup is this idea of our trade policy if, if there is a rise in import duties etc then all these companies depend on extensive imports and exports so they are very globally linked if there is a sudden ch- raise in import prices on semiconductor equipment or chips etc then they will have difficulty doing business so i guess that is one more thing to be paid attention to and the government's idea is that now they are fully behind this uh, they are willing to give a lot of incentives and policy support which would make that idea of a semiconductor fab in india come true now and uh, how much is our requirement of semiconductor in india requirement is a way greater than what we will be able to manufacture so i i would not want to go into the numbers because they'll be just too large but what i can say is that it's not as if when we make two or three fabs in india all our chips and all our mobile phones will be manufactured in india itself it's not what's going to happen but what is going to happen is probably what we need is critical defense equipment where you don't need advanced edge chips there we will be able to have critical backup also for critical other technologies maybe space etc we'll be able to uh, have a supply chain which is completely indian but uh, for commercial uh, and consumer electronics we'll buy from outside which is fine you know there is no need for a, us to become fully self dependent no country can and that will be the case with india also so we have started our road map towards semiconductor and there are issues but government is now very positive as you said about that we need a stable tax regime and the policy prime minister would have promised that there has been proactive policy there have been supportive policy and is the most tax free country now for the investors thank you mr pranay for talking to us thank you for the insight and i hope that country comes together to help government build this semiconductor ecosystem here thanks you were listening to a discussion on india's push for a robust and resilient semiconductor industry the participants were pranay kotasthane semiconductor policy expert and prasoon shrivastav journalist This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official.
you may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.